Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this album art recreation episode, we're going to take a look at Drake's first official album. So I've got a, another photograph that, of Drake that I found on Google, and it's a surprisingly pretty simple cover to recreate this sort of stencil look. All you have to do is have your photograph, and if you don't have a clear background on yours, there may be an extra step. But the first thing you want to do is just go to Image Adjustments Threshold, and this will allow you to change your photo into black and white. And I want to pull it back to the point where the background is mostly white and we see the face in good pattern. So if you do have a background where stuff like this is popping out, I'll show you how to fix that. For example, if I just press OK, I can just grab my polygonal lasso tool and either on a new layer or just on this one, I can kind of make a selection of the person that we want or the things, and I can just right click and fill them with white. Manually clean up a selection if you are having a more problematic photo. If your photo has a really complicated background, then you might just be best cutting out your subject as the first step and placing them on a white background and then adding the threshold. But from your original starting photograph, you wanna to get to a point like this and then we're gonna right click and duplicate our photo or you can use the shortcut Command J. And on the duplicated photo, we're gonna to go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And we're just gonna apply a little bit of motion blur at a zero degree, just straight left and right angle. So the distance amount, you can choose just a slight distance amount. We, we don't wanna to go too blurred. I suppose you could, it's just a matter of taste, but just kind of following the original album art, let's do something like 30 and press OK. And now on this blurred layer, I want to add a little bit of color tint. In the album it's red, but again, I suppose you can do whatever you want. And I'm gonna to go to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation to do that. This isn't the only way that you could probably do that, but I'm gonna press Colorize and increase the saturation quite a bit. Now, one step here is I'm gonna blend them a little bit. You can choose a few different ways to blend them, such as maybe just putting this on multiply blending mode or setting it to something like linear light or hard light. I'll do multiply. If you want, you can even maybe lower the opacity just a tad, but really I don't want to lose that red tint that we're getting. And I suppose if you wanted to get a little more fancy, you could repeat that step a couple times, maybe move things around and add different colors if you wanted to go for that look. But the last thing about the album cover is just the text. Now I don't know exactly what font they used, but one thing about the font they used is the way they wrote it, it's kind of stretched in a little bit. So this is a common trick that you'll see in some poster and flyer designs where they'll take the text and they'll either stretch it up or squeeze it down for that visual style effect. In this case, they've squeezed it to the left. And all I did was go to edit, free transform or the shortcut command T and I'm holding shift so that I can get a disproportionate squeeze and I can squeeze it in so I get more of that squeezed in font such as they used. And this is just the way that they happen to organize the lettering with a different colored accent for the artist name. So something like that is honestly very close, I think, to the original album artwork. Now, obviously recreating it is always easier than originally creating an idea. Leave me a request for a cool album art in the comments or shoot me an email or DM on social media if you want to give me some ideas for future episodes like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.